Welcome to the Tech Blog Writer Podcast, your guide to future tech trends and innovation in a language you understand. Now, over to your host, Neil Hughes. Welcome back to another episode of the Tech Blog Rider podcast. I've had a strange day today because I woke up with a new Foo Fighters song in my head, The Sky is a Neighbourhood. Uh, but during the chorus, I suddenly started singing She's My Cherry Pie by Warrant. I mean, am I going mad? Does anyone even remember Warrant anymore? Please email me or tweet me and put me out of my misery on this one. Uh, but sticking with the music theme, I'm quite excited about today's guest. I mean, it's a great entrepreneurial story and it really does have it all. So I invited the CEO and founder of Splice onto the show today to learn how Splice is improving the modern musician and the way that they approach making music. But even more importantly, it really is changing and transforming people's lives. It's got so many great stories about how wannabe musicians stuck in the nine to five grind are now actually successful musicians as a result of Splice. But I don't want to spoil the interview, so buckle up, hold on tight, because I'm going to beam your ears all the way to Manhattan so we can speak with Steve Martocci from Splice. So a massive warm welcome to the show, Steve. I mean, to call you an experienced entrepreneur would be an understatement, but could I ask you to fill the listeners in about your startup journey and what led you to where you are today? Yeah, I mean, we could be here for a while if we went back <laughs> to the beginning. I think I tried to register giftcertificates.com when I was in sixth grade or something. <laughs> but uh, but really where, where things got popular and started to work for me um, was uh, a company called GroupMe, yeah. which were really... Uh, pioneering the the concept of group messaging on on the iPhone or, or on phones in general. It was before the iPhone had group text messaging and we kind of made it to go to concerts with our friends and it turns out it was useful for a whole lot more than that. We started that and me and my co-founder Jared and I started it in 2010 and uh, sold it to Skype in only 13 months in 2011. It's still a, a top 100 app in the app store today and, uh, and really great. And then uh, after that, uh, moved on. I did a little uh, side project called Blade, where I uh, co-founded a you know a, a private aviation company here, mostly based in New York, for for getting people uh, out to the Hamptons. People like to call it the Uber of helicopters. Uh, with my co-founder Rob Wiesenthal, who um, who runs the company, I sit on the board now. But uh, really, what really has consumed me over the last uh, three plus years now uh, is Splice. Um, which to us is the creative hub for the modern musician. And uh, it's, it's kind of bringing the ideas, a lot of the cool collaborative and open thinking that we've had in the programming world to, uh, to music. Man, I thought I spun a lot of plates, but uh, you took it to a whole new level. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's no like core focus there other than they all have software in them. <laughs> now, I recently discovered Splice when I read that it had over 1 million users and that Splice is becoming the creative hub for the modern musician, all by allowing mm-hmm. artists to collaborate on music projects via the cloud. So I had to get on the show after reading that as a big music man myself. But for anyone mm-hmm. listening that is hearing about you for the very first time, can you offer an overview of of Splice, along with what actually makes it unique from everything else out there? Totally. Um, you know, if you're a, a, a music creator, you kind of know that the software stack is extremely fragmented. The tools are hard to use. The industry, the whole kind of creator side of the industry is just like lagged behind uh, what we should be capable of with modern software by like almost over 10 years, you know, big, heavy desktop software, not cloud connected. It's a really kind of like, almost archaic way of, of doing things. And so Splice has kind of come in over the top and, and provided cloud connectivity to uh, digital audio workstations like Ableton and Apple's Logic uh, and, other, and other DAWs, but also kind of really focusing on changing the, the way that musicians embrace technology in their songwriting process and the way they exchange content with each other and really kind of being one kind of cloud-first platform that, that unites the... Um, the creation process and helps them make more progress faster than they ever have before. So like I said at the beginning, you are an experienced entrepreneur, but I've got to ask, I mean, what was the inspiration behind Splice? I mean, can you remember that moment that you decided to build the platform that would pave the way for Splice as we know it now? Yeah, you know, it's a it was a long journey, actually, to getting to, to working on this because, you know, the music industry is the is like, it, you know, after you have a successful 
uh, exit. You know, a lot of VCs want you to fund you again in what you're doing, but music is like one of these like, oh, really? It's going to be a music company? Like, come on, you know, like it's just a really not a not a fun place for venture capitalists who uh, you know have lost a lot of many times in there. So you know, the journey was first. While searching for what to do next, I knew it needed to be something uh, that motivated me. I met my co-founder uh, and actually one of our, our lead investors at a conference. We were both saw each other speak at, and we kind of like knew we wanted to work together, but we weren't sure on what. And I had always had, I think most programmers uh, who are music fans know about how powerful the kind of tools and thinking of open source and collaborative things like GitHub uh, have totally changed the world. And... The idea was always on my list, but it was always like, that one's too crazy. Don't go do that one. It's in music. And you know what it was? A, a buddy of mine who is a musician and got into programming, he like said the words to me finally, like, where's GitHub for Ableton? And it was hearing it from the like musician side who understood the power, like who was a musician his whole life and then understood the power of code and our way of thinking. And it was like, man, we got to go merge these two worlds. And uh, and that kind of started us down the path. And, and we didn't necessarily find that the concepts don't map the same. The industries are different. The creative process is different. But it really like set us down the direction. And it turns out my, my co-founder, I didn't even know at the time, was an audio engineer for half his life. And uh, he was technically capable of doing the stuff that I wasn't that let us get started with our first version. Now, when I was doing my research on you guys, you'd be glad to hear that I read so many great reviews, all called Splice, <laughs> a music producer's dream. So you've got to be relieved that there wasn't, uh, this is Steve's uh, difficult third album. There was not a, no reviews like that. <laughs> <laughs> but what is it, do you think, that users love so much about this platform? You know, I think the, the first thing is everything that we build really comes from this trying to be the artist. At, we care about our users so much and we, we understand how hard the creative process is. And really understand that technology gets in the way a lot. And so when we design our software, we, we really try to get the tedious parts out. One of the particular parts of our platform, Splice Sounds, which is a, a, a library of like two million, oh, nearly two million samples and loops that you can just quickly get. We, we like to say our product strategy is the sound in your head at your fingertips on that. And uh, we just really care about what the user's struggles are. And we're here to help them make progress. And we design it all for exactly what they need. We spend so much time watching the process and learning from it and refining it. And it's just a, a true dedication to caring about the, the creator that, that I think differentiates in a really, really big way. And, and we use like really modern techniques, good data, good user interviews, a, good, a whole great product development process to get there. And you mentioned earlier that uh, you know, a lot of this technology is actually changing the world. And I really think it is because a few years ago, you know, to, to write a book, to have your own radio show, to be a journalist, you had to go through certain industries. But now it's open to everyone where we, we can all uh, write our own news. We can record our own radio show or record our own music or album and get it on Spotify straight away. So I've got to ask, is Splice only for professionals or does it cater for people of all skill levels? Yeah, you know, it's really, what's been amazing here is that the transition into what we call the modern musician, it's like software has become the instrument. Yeah. You know, software is really what is writing so much of what you hear today. And, uh, you know, with 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 Splice Sound, you can, you and, and, you know, most of our tools, you kind of become this one man band. And... The skill levels, like you can get started with us pretty easily. We have an online beat maker that a lot of people's first exposure to making music is just playing with that and being like, oh, this is how like you make a beat. And uh, but then it ranges all the way up. I mean, we've heard some I saw a tweet this morning that like, you know, one of the sample packs we released on Splice Sounds, uh, the, the, per the artist knows that at least three top 40 hits were made just using uh, using his pack. So it goes all the, the cool thing I like about it is really that it's useful at all stages in the process. And we, we do some we also distribute some of the software you need to make music uh, in a really more modern way. So we have the most popular synthesizer in the world called Serum. We sell it on a rent to own subscription model. So like if you're just getting started and you don't want to invest a ton of money in some of the, the most expensive software, you can you can literally get a three day free trial to it. Uh, you can pay $9.99 a month instead of the full uh, almost $200 up front. 
our sample, you know, you can browse our sample library free for 14 days. Uh, the cloud collaboration stuff is free. So it's really easy to get started with us um, as the kind of companion. Uh, and we have a ton of educational tools in our community too. So I'd say if you're just starting and you're interested, we've got a lot to help you make progress fast. And the cool thing is if you're absolutely at the top of the music game, we also can completely change the way you make music. So it's it's really cool to see you know, these biggest artists in the world using it and loving our platform so much. So if we have ignited something in someone that's listening to this show now and they want to give it to a try, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, can you offer a little advice on how they can get up and running quickly and ultimately get the most out of Splice as soon as they land on that plate? Yeah, I mean, look, if you're a music creator, uh, just go to our website and browse this, you know, the, the feature pages and you're going to be like, oh, this is, this. how did I live without this? <laughs> but if you haven't, if you haven't made music before, I would say uh, go to splice.com slash sounds slash beat maker and make a beat. And like we made it super easy to show you how to use samples and make a beat. And, uh, and you can share it out on your social really easily and get a feel for it. And then, uh, you know, we, we integrate with uh, tools like GarageBand like, that are totally free. You know, there's there's no excuse anymore for you not to give making music a, a chance. And hopefully, uh, you know, we, we get you across the line so you finish a track. So... So come on over. Now, I read um, a great quote from you where you said uh, that you believe that the music creation is experiencing a paradigm shift at the moment. I mean, can you expand on that? Because it was a great story that I read online. And a lot of people listening probably not read it, but I think it was a great point that you made. Yeah, I mean, look, there's so much about the industry that was closed and, and people were not sharing with each other and also didn't really have a way to share with each other. And so we're trying to, even like what we've done with the sample pack, uh, samples, you know, a lot of people think of samples and they think of like ripping off each other's, you know, work, like, like going into a, you know, an old track and, and, and stealing a bass line and getting in trouble or things like that. But there's actually a ton of content that is created intentionally to be used in a royalty free way by other musicians. And one of the things that was interesting is when we, we kind of saw that the only people, the only artists that were releasing packs were kind of really at the late stages of their career. And the thing was, they were so afraid of their secret sauce getting out. They were so afraid of other people having their materials. That, and the industry in general wasn't really sharing techniques, wasn't sharing the, like, the process and how they did things. It was very, very secretive. And we are really, really changing that. And I think it's similar to what you saw in kind of the birth of open source software and and collaboration and in, uh, in that space and and I think that you know that's the big shift is this openness we're creating and we're doing it by also creating more opportunities for artists so you know for us we've sprinkled in like a, a an ability to monetize uh, your work as you expand and share your process and so now you can get recognized as a musician for not just your finished work but for your individual components, your individual pieces, you're encouraged to share. Artists are now realizing, man, I should get my sounds out there because why not have more of the world heading in my direction as a genre and me being the like thought leader, sound designer of the space. So like really it's the collaborative, open connectedness, that, that, that whole direction that you know other industries and even our personal lives and social networking have gone down. And that's a big paradigm shift. And we're also getting the best tools in the hands of people. So I think we're progressing the state of the art in a big way uh, by opening it up and and properly getting the right tools in, into the hands of these artists. Now, you mentioned that about samples and the way people used to look at uh, musicians and how they use them. I mean, how much do you think people's attitudes to using samples have actually changed over the last decade? So? Yeah, no, look, I mean, I remember early in the Splice days, you saw uh, Mark Ronson's TED Talk talking about sampling, and he gave a really good perspective. It's not like you're ripping off uh, musicians or, or stealing nostalgia kind of wholesale. You're, you're injecting yourself into the narrative. Yeah. And I'll tell you, like, if you the, the amount of, of sounds or top 40 songs you hear using Splice sounds, like sampling is, is part of the game, right? And yeah. like, our samples particularly, they're intentionally designed for you to do it. So I think that what's interesting is starting to get the that word sampling uh, and using samples away from the negative, because I think the, the mainstream kind of music fan hears a lot about, you know, court cases about, oh, you sampled this and now I'm suing you and like that thing. 
So they hear that side, but they really don't know the kind of collaborative uh, way that samples are used to to kind of do the songwriting process, to inspire each other. And there's just so much positivity around that word that I think is really, uh, really going in the right direction right now. So do you have any stories or feedback from users, artists or musicians? Yeah. Or use Splice? There's a couple of good stories on the on the artist side. Uh, we have a couple of artists. We have an artist, Crane, who is uh, a full-time graphic designer, uh, not a full-time musician, and, and made some great snare drums on our platform. He has a couple of drum kits he's released through through Splice Sounds. And he's got the most downloaded sound ever on Splice, the bamboo snare. And he is able to quit his full-time job. He's a full-time touring musician now. Uh, we've got many stories of people who are working at like places like Olive Garden and Pizza Hut and then actually started monetizing with Splice Sounds and became full-time musicians and now have top hits. And then I also, you know, I had this incredible experience where I got a chance to speak on a panel with Cascade, who's one of the biggest electronic artists in the world. And we didn't always know like why he... Uh, had accepted our our uh, our panel invite. Uh, I'd interacted with him once online, uh, but we, we didn't think he was a user or anything. And when we met, uh, he told me how he had been a Splice Sounds user for a year, and it's completely changed the way he's made music. And you know, he can't use he doesn't use his existing sample library. He only uses Splice, and and it was so encouraging to watch someone say that this was one of the few things in their whole history, and they're a top musician of the world. Uh, changing their songwriting process and changing the way they think about uh, crafting their their art that was so powerful for me. And you know, I'm not a great musician. I, I try to play around, but I always get nervous. I should just be working on the company that's helping others uh, make great music. <laughs> uh, but uh, you know, those stories and the, and the reaction from artists for me are just totally. Like, that's a dream come true type stuff. Oh, it really is. It's got to be incredibly inspiring. And it also must fuel your desire to keep doing this thing and showing you you're doing the right thing, isn't it? A hundred percent. I mean, it really... And this is a big thing going down this path. It was the craziest of all the, the kind of tech ideas. And it was the one that, you know, as I said, music is not one the, the, the world thinks um, <laughs> you should go into. Uh, but it's we, we kind of really, really have, have persevered through it and, and really shown that, uh, we are changing an entire art form. And for us, it's the one that, you know, if I can make more people dance, if I can make more people have a great time, it keeps me motivated every day. Wow. I mean, but before I let you go, can you remind the listeners yeah. of the Splice website and how they can contact you or a member of your team if they've got any questions about everything we've talked about today? Yeah, totally. Uh, Splice.com. We, we kept it simple. So uh, you can <laughs> check us out there. Uh, on Twitter, I am at Smart. My, my handle and then there's uh, the company is at Splice um, but they can email partners at Splice.com uh, we, we get back to that it's a lot of artist inquiries and stuff come through there but yeah find us find us in those places we, we you'd be surprised we love the feedback and uh, you know we love releasing content from artists so so reach on out cool now I always say at the end of every episode tech works best when it brings people together but what you're doing though is like <laughs> unleashing creativity in people you know that are doing yeah. these everyday jobs but Actually, they're actually life-changing, isn't it? And I think that's incredibly inspiring. And I really appreciate you taking the time out today to come and share that story. So thanks for coming on. Yeah, I, you know, I'll say thanks so much for having me. And the more we can tell this story and the more careers we can make and kind of redefine this space that really needed the attention that it's getting from us, uh, it's 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 a dream come true type work. So I'm, I'm really honored and, and excited to keep working on it. I love how Steve has created that creative hub for the modern musician. And not only that, I think it's truly inspirational listening to stories there of how the platform has transformed the lives of users that were working at places like Pizza Hut one minute and then catapulted into the job that they love. But I do think it's important not to underestimate the dedication of those individuals that not only embraced the Splice platform, but also threw themselves into using it. Because I don't think there's any such thing as overnight success. But these increasing number of tools such as Splice really have levelled the playing field. And I think Steve is right there that there really is a paradigm shift in music and indeed most areas now. Because I remember being at school and feeling that having my own radio show, writing a book, recording an album, etc. were all completely out of reach. And if you would have said you wanted to do anything like this, you've probably got a clip around the ear off your parents and saying, you know, be realistic. Uh, but now you really can do anything that you want. Even if you have limited resources, all you actually need is a strong work ethic now that there are so many affordable tools at your disposal. 
So I really enjoyed chatting with Steve today and I cannot thank him enough for sharing the art of the possible because I think that is so powerful. Do you want to appear on the show or do you have any questions for Neil? Remember, you can reach him at techblogwriter at outlook.com or visit his website at www.techblogwriter.co.uk. Now, I'd love to hear if you tried Splice and how you got on with it. And even if you're listening to this episode three years from now and want to tell me how it is or how it transformed your life, and if you're wondering if I'm still podcasting, hopefully I still am, you have an open invitation to come on this show and talk about it. So please stay in touch and keep those emails and tweets coming in. And even if it is just to say, you know what, Neil, I thought Sky as a Neighbourhood sounds a little bit like Cherry Pie too, just to prove that I'm not completely mad. But that's it. We've come full circle now. So thanks to Steve for sharing his story today. And an even bigger thank you to you guys and dolls for tuning in. So until next time, don't be a stranger. Thanks for listening to the Tech Blog Writer Podcast. Until next time, remember, technology is best when it brings people together.